Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. And today I wanted to do a quick demonstration on adjusting for laser curve. Um, this is important, especially when trying to get very precise fitting box joints, maybe puzzle pieces, as well as inlays and more. So in knowing what your curve is, how to measure it and how to adjust it in Lightburn, it's really critical to be getting uh, more properly fitting pieces. So we are going to go through the quick description, uh, how to measure it for your specific laser and then how to make the adjustment in Lightburn. So if that's something you wanna learn about, stay tuned, we're gonna jump right into it. Okay, so first we need to understand what is kerf. And kerf is really very simply, is the amount of material removed by any cutting device. So whether it's a table saw, your band saw, a router, uh, everything has a kerf to it in the amount of material it's removing as it passes through it. So with the laser, the tricky thing is it's such a fine point, it's hard to measure, but it can still produce a slight gap which can have an effect on the fit and finish of your pieces. So. I've drawn up this very basic diagram to just kind of talk through this. So this is the typical of either a CO2 uh, nozzle or the module for your dialed laser. It's going to have your laser beam coming out through a focus lens, possibly out of an air assist cone. And your beam, again, is not straight line. It is more of an hourglass shape. And so it kind of comes into a focal point and then diverges back out. And so that's kind of important to know that you, there will be slight inconsistencies with this. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be looking for the average cut width. So what we're going to end up with is that while your focus point may be down to 0 0.08 millimeters, your actual kerf is generally a little bit wider that dependent on your material. Now, the other thing to remember is different material is going to end up with different kerf because of how much material ends up being blasted away. It could be a thicker material, and so you're up wider on this beam on where it uh, enters and exits the material. And if your focus point is up higher, it's also gonna diverge more and you're gonna have a wider end at the bottom. Uh, you're also never gonna really have a straight 90 degree cut as I'm showing in this diagram. You'll generally have a slightly angled cut to it. Again, that's dependent on where your focal point of your beam comes in at in relation to your material. But the end result overall is that you're gonna have a certain amount of material that is removed in your cut. And what we're gonna to do today is look at how we can measure the average thickness that is for a given material, and then be able to create an offset for that. Um, it's really important that you, just like your material cut tests, that you also maybe do a curve test if you're looking for high precision in your uh, your alignment of pieces. Now, if you're just cutting out objects, they stand alone. This isn't really critical for this, but this is really where you want to have tight fitting joints. So fitting box joints together where you don't want to have a lot of slop is a perfect example of this. Inlays as well, where you want two pieces to fit together really tightly without a lot of gap. Those are two of the most common areas where you're going to worry about curve. So let's talk a little bit about how we're going to set this up to make those adjustments. All right, so we are into light burn here, and uh, I have this set up. We're gonna be doing this as we're testing the 8 p 20 Pro. So I already have that workspace set up in here. And again, these are gonna be the numbers that work for me. You're gonna need to run these tests for your laser as well. So what the first thing I do is what I'm looking to do is we need to cut some shapes of known sizes and then we're going to do some math with those. We're going to take some measurements and uh, find out how much material is removed from, uh, or how much smaller that item is versus what we specified. So we want to go with something fairly standard. And so you're going to want to pick a unit that works, makes sense for you. Um, we'll start out working in inches here. So we're going to just click over to our inches and I am going to draw a simple square. So I want it to be actually square we're going to drop that to a line and then i am going to select this keep it locked and i'm just going to take this down to be a one inch square uh, consistently both vertically and horizontally so this when we cut it out the 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 laser is going to follow this beam and you remember that beam has a certain thickness to it so it's going to be cutting on both the inside and the outside as it travels alongside that and what we're going to be measuring is that thickness and then we're going to be uh, accounting for it just being half. And then uh, with this, it's you, it's good to actually do the more cuts and the more measurements, the, the, the law of average is going to, uh, to take into effect here. So if you cut this once and it comes out as 1.98 inches, 
and you cut it again and it's 1.92 inches, there's a bit of a variance there. So the more of these we do, we can then average that out and get really more of a consistent average for this material. Because remember, there's variances in your material. You might get a soft spot, you may get a hard spot. Uh, with plywood, you may get an air gap, you may get an extra glue joint. You want to cut this out a number of times to really get an average. The more cuts you do, uh, the more accurate this is going to be. But I am going to strictly go with about five. So I'm going to go ahead and select our item and we're just going to use our array tool here. So we click on this and we want to basically make, let's say, five columns. And uh, your spacing is, uh, yeah, we can go about an eighth inch apart just so we don't need to waste any extra material and uh, everything else looks good. So now we have an array up here. We're going to double check our settings here. Um, and in there, see here's, I've been already been playing with the curve. We're going to want to zero this out to start. So if you have anything in there, you want to zero it out. This curve offset is what we're going to be playing with later. But we want one pass. Uh, this machine at, from my material test, cutting about 450, max power of 100%. That's going to get our most consistent cut. Again, you want to be using the numbers you've tested on this because you want the most efficient cut possible. So if you're using extra power and going slower, you might be getting some extra burning that you don't need, and that's going to affect the measurement here. So we got our five squares here. We've got it set up. Uh, we've got zero kerf adjustment. Um, I'm going to go ahead and send this to the laser. We'll cut it out and we'll bring it back and start measuring them. All right, so we went ahead and cut these out and I went ahead and taped this to keep them in order just in case uh, that helps. So I'm going to then just go ahead and label these one, two, three, four, and five. And that's just in case we need to make measurements of this compared to this, but mostly we're worried about how these all compare in size in both directions and then also in uh, relation to what we drew them up as one inch. So now I'm going to go ahead and take this tape off. And they're all dropping out, which is good. So we'll just slide this up there for now. Next thing you are going to need is you're going to want a decent digital caliper. Uh, I like the metal versions over the plastic ones. They just tend to be a little more consistent and accurate. And this one, as you can see, it does have the option of either millimeters, inches in decimal, or inches in fractional. So if you're a person in the US and used to working in inches, this can actually help you with some of the quick conversions of going from uh, metric to uh, imperial. But what we want to do is we want to then go ahead and start measuring each one of these. And since we started out in inches, we're actually going to want to move over to that. So as we put it out in light burn, uh, we were saying these were one inch, but as you see, the actual size of the object is 0.996. And so we've got that difference there from one is going to be uh, the kerf of our laser. Um, but you got to remember it's going on the line. So the kerf is actually half of the distance here. So what we're going to do is I'm just going to start measuring these out and I'm going to go ahead and write on them. This one is 0.996. And since we're square up and down, we can also check the other direction. And depending on your laser, it might be round or it might be square, it might be rectangular. So you see in this direction, it's actually 0.993. So a slight difference there, but we want to take both into account. So 0.993. Now we're going to go through each one of these. We're going to go ahead and measure them. So here we go. We got 0.996 again. And on this side, we have 0.994. So I'm gonna go through and measure all these, mark them down, and then we will able to start doing just a little quick math. All right, so now that we have all our measurements, we can do a little bit of math. Uh, stick with me here, it's really not that difficult. Um, but what we're doing here is we've entered in the width and the height of each of the blocks. And so I've gone down and in general, we've been about 0.996 to 0.994 inches on the width, and then the height, we're in 0.993 to 0.992. Uh, and that's one thing with the diode lasers and the more square or rectangular beam focus is that you might have varying 
distances of where they're cutting. And so you want to take that into effect and we want to get an overall average of both directions. And so here we have the average of each one of these and we put that into an average together of 0.9936 is our average width uh, on our one inch object. So uh, that is taking into account both sides of the cut. So what we want to do is subtract that from one, which gives us an overall width of 0 0.0064 inches for the complete curve. And then we want to divide that by two because we're only taking into account the beam, the half of the beam. And so that is what our curve offset would be is half of that, which is 0 0.0032 inches for these diodes. Now, if you're working in millimeters, then you would just simply multiply that by 25.4, or you would just start out with your math in millimeters. In metric anyway so uh, for our metric offset here we are looking at an offset of 0 0.08128 millimeters and that is the number we are worried about using in lightburn so let's jump over to lightburn and talk about how we're going, going to test this so what I've done here is I've made up just a couple of quick pieces that would act as a box joint and so that's where you want these pieces to fit together into these pieces and so what I do is I want to show you the difference here. So on this bottom one, we have zero curve set up and you can see that by opening up our layer and we have a zero curve offset here and nothing. And it's not, so it's not going to adjust the beam for that curve here. Again, we've got our power and speed that we've done from our speed test to do this cut. And then we are going to take a look at the curve offset in this one. And here is where we would adjust it. Now we're working in the metric, so we're going to go 0 0.0081 or 0 0.008 um, to keep it fairly simple. And that is where we would enter in our curve offset. And what that will do is it will automatically detect a shape and it'll offset it out by that much. Now, here's a caveat. If you are drawing within Lightburn and you're using shapes, great. But if you are importing objects, you need to make sure that they are closed. If you have an object that isn't closed, it's not going to know how to offset it because it's looking for the outward direction from that object. Uh, that's one thing that may trip you up because if it's not there, it's not going to make the adjustment. So if you want to, you can just highlight an object, you come up to edit, and you would auto join selected shapes. Now this one is already joined, so that is grayed out up here. But if it was black, it would recognize it as open. The other thing you can do is you can come in here and just say select open shapes and then it'll show you any objects in your drawing that are not closed. So it's a good thing to check that first before you run this test. So once we have this test set up, we can cut out the top one, which will be uh, having the 0 0.08 offset, and then the bottom one will have zero curve offset, and then I just put the engraving in so that we can label them and know which ones are which. So let's send that off to the laser, then we'll come back and we'll see and compare how they fit. All right, I've brought in the pieces from the laser. Again, we've marked them. So this pair did not have a curve offset. This pair does have the curve offset. So let's just take a look at this. So when you put these pieces together, you'll notice that there is a little bit of wiggle there. And when I move it back and forth, you can kind of see that gap uh, top or bottom there. Um, that is a concern because obviously these pieces will not fit snugly together. And uh, that can give you an issue. Like if you have an inlay that can be a gap that then shows light through or that needs to be filled up more. Uh, if you're doing some gears that need tighter fitting, um, that can be an issue. Or when doing box joints, you know, that little bit over a longer span can cause just a little bit of offset and some slight inaccuracies. Again, with these diode lasers, it's very minor, but still something to be concerned. All right, so these pieces do have our curve offset. So when you go to put them together, you see there's a little bit of resistance but they snap in together and as a matter of fact I can lift this up and it's tight but it's just tight enough that it's a friction fit and there is no moving that back and forth and so that is a very nice fine joint both front and back it's tight enough that it will hold together friction wise and then of course if you put it in this into the box shape like an angle it's going to fit a lot better and allow you to get the glue joint done a lot easier with that so that is a basic test now if you 
from here, you can always make minor adjustments, and dial it in even better if you want an even tighter fit or just a little bit looser. You could just adjust that number up or down, but this is kind of how you will test and get that dialed in on your laser as well. Well, there you have it. That is a quick tutorial on how to find your kerf and make the adjustment in light burn so that you can have nice tight fitting joints on your projects as well. I hope you found this informative and if you have any questions or comments go ahead and leave them down below if you're looking to use some of the tools you saw in this video i will have some links down below to everything and they are affiliate links they do help me out with a little bit of kickback and no extra cost to you and i do appreciate you using them but as always no pressure just you being here watching these videos is a great support to this channel if you do have any questions about this video or anything else, again, leave those comments down below. Uh, if you liked it, hit that uh, like button. And uh, if I earned your trust and you wanna see about more what I'm doing in this workshop, uh, some more tips, tricks, reviews, things like that, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Always appreciate that support as well. That's gonna wrap it up for today. I will have more videos coming soon on this Acer P20, so stay tuned for that. And uh, don't forget to catch our Sunday night live streams that I do with the Clack Shack every Sunday evening at 7 p.m. Central. We have a fun time just allowing, answering questions from the audience and talking about new things that are going in our workshops as well. So be sure to uh, watch our channels for that. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you found it entertaining or educational. And uh, I hope you can get out into your workshop and make something too. We'll catch you next time.